The reason that our country is in the mess that it is in today is not because of the Republicans, it's not because of the Democrats. Let me tell you this, it's because of lame Christians. There is a reproach that comes with being a follower of Christ. We in America have tried to reshape the whole church so that it's palatable and likable in the culture. A church that is accepted well with the culture is usually not accepted well with Christ. The church is a fortress, and a fortress is strength, a fortress is might. Not only a center of defense, but a place of strategic planning and offense. Our God does not expect us to wait for the darkness to enclose around us. He expects us to take up His banner and fight the darkness with His light. You want to know what the biggest problem with America is? The wolf is this country. Gave in. Gave in to public pressure. Gave in to political correctness. One of the greatest curses this country has ever had to deal with is political correctness. Preparing the Christian to shine the light against the darkness of this world. Welcome to Our Mighty Fortress Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Miller, and welcome to the show. We have a very convicting subject to cover today. But first, please go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button on the podcast platform in which you're listening to us upon. We have several social media platforms. With lots of material that you can watch and listen to. The first one, Facebook. When you type in at Mighty Fortress 313, you can find our Facebook page. That's growing more and more every day. And of course, we do have a YouTube channel as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to help the channel grow there. The YouTube is definitely a full time job in itself, but we release more and more videos as time progresses. But you can watch the podcast there as well. You can also visit our website, OurMightyFortress.com. There we have all the media there hosted to include articles and even a link to our merch store to help support the work. Of course, if you feel so motivated to donate to the work that we do here, feel free to do so through our website in the established PayPal link. If we've helped you in some way, of course, we would love to hear about it at our mighty fortress at gmail.com by following and supporting the podcast. You let me know that you care about the subjects that we discuss today. I want to talk about a subject that plagues every single person on earth. This is going to hinder some people more than others, but one thing is for sure. It's responsible for just about every one of our bad decisions in life. We cannot pretend to know much about this because every one of us can look back at the different points at, in our lives, especially when we were younger, and wonder what we re what were we thinking. This problem is also what separates us from God. This is the sin of pride, and it manifests in so many ways. We're going to look at the origin and how it stems from within us. We'll also analyze pride in three ways. We're going to start on a grander scale of some more obvious cases in history, and even our modern political situation. Then I want to look at our workplace and our daily interactions with people. Finally, we're going to narrow this down to the likes of you and I and how we can counter this ever-present problem. With that introduction, let's get right into this. Starting off on a more interesting note, the term pride is actually used in both a positive and a negative context. A father or mother can hold their newborn child and say that the child is their pride and joy. We can say to someone that we're proud of them for some sort of achievement as well. Well, language changes over time and it can require further context in order to figure out its meaning, especially with English. Another very similar word that's morphed in meaning over the years is the word apology. This word is used to say sorry to another person for some sort of wrong that was done to them. The word actually means to give a defense of something, which is kind of funny. So if you took that word at its literal meaning, you're not saying that you're sorry for something, but you're in fact defending the action. <laughs> now that's ironic. What is pride? 
and what is the meaning that we're going to analyze through this podcast. It is the inordinate self-esteem or an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talent, beauty, wealth, accomplishments, or rank and elevation of office. If we could simplify this even further into just a statement, it's simply thinking of yourself as a little g god. Yes, it's thinking of yourself as a god. In doing this, it can adversely affect our actions at any given moment, and it definitely leads to terrible decisions. The Christian scripture has a specific verse for this problem. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 18, it says, quote, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. It says that pride forecasts a person's destruction, and that same haughty attitude leads them into that fall. Now that's very interesting. It starts with thinking of yourself more than you should. It's the opposite of humility. Pride is the opposite of humility. It is the humble person that's lifted up in the sight of God. In fact, we don't see many humble people making terrible decisions all of the time. And really, it's not that it defines a person. If let's say you make a mistake or an error, oh, it's because of your pride. No, but those who are prideful or very proud people do tend to make a lot of errors. There are many points in history where decisions stemming from pride uh, are made and they can cost the lives of many people. So many to choose from. <laughs> and since I'm formerly military, let me give you one that's considered one of the greatest military disasters in history. I should note that not all disasters are made out of pride because it could be due to incompetence. But the one that stamped from the pride of a man can be very, very costly, not only of himself, but of the men who follow him. This is mainly because of the failure to recognize that an error was made and the lack of understanding to change its course. They are too proud to admit that they're wrong until it's already too late. Let's give one of these famous examples as one such occasion was rated the second greatest military disaster in history by HistoryHit.com, and it was the Battle of Corea. In 53 BC, General Marcus Licinius Crassus and his Roman legions of over 40,000 men marched into the desert of the Middle East to pursue the Parthian army. Now, to give a little bit of a background to this, the Roman Empire came down into the Middle East and, and, and stretched all the way uh, back across into Egypt. Well, it rubbed shoulders with the Parthian Empire or um, the ever-expanding Parthians, the, the Parthians that took over the formerly Seleucid Empire. So the Romans and the Parthians, they, they first fought with each other, fought with each other extensively, and then they just kind of said, Okay, let's call it a draw. <laughs> let's work with each other. But it wasn't exactly a truce. It was just, hey, you do your thing and we'll do our thing. <laughs> so there were conflicts that arose over Rome's time. And this was one of them. This general's pride of pursuit of fame and glory left him ignoring the advice of his allies and his advisors who proposed staying in the mountains or near the Euphrates River to reduce the danger from the Parthian horse archers, marching deep into the desert with his entire army. It left them weakened by thirst and heat. You know, I've been to three Middle Eastern countries, and I will tell you that the heat is absolutely no joke. I mean, we wore plates inside our vest, and that just wore us down. I felt like this iron turtle in a, in a way wearing that big heavy flak jacket, but I cannot imagine carrying plate armor and shields like the Romans did while marching in that same heat. Crassus misjudged the size of the Parthian army, and he ordered the men to form an immobile square. In his pride, Crassus did not consider the infamous Parthian horse archers, and when they came, 
All they did was ride around the formation shooting arrows, and it devastated the Roman infantry forces. When Crassus had his men pursue after the enemy, they were charged by Parthian heavy cavalry called cataphracts. And this would result not only in the death of Crassus, his own son, and over 20,000 soldiers. Over 10,000 were taken hostage, and around 5,000 would be able to go back to Roman territory. Wow, 20,000 men would be killed due to a man's pride, and 10,000 were taken hostage, and who knows how many died from that 10,000. So potentially, you had about 30,000 men that died because of a man's pride. Crassus's pride would destroy the lives of many men to include his own. What is absolutely ironic about this story was how it ended. Defeating the Roman infantry was no easy feat at this time in history, and the name of the Parthian general that pulled off such a magnificent tactic was named Serena. After his glorious victory, Serena returned to his king expecting great rewards. Little did he know that the victory invoked jealousy in the king. He ordered Serena's execution when he came back. Now think about that. Is that not something? Victory because of a man's pride. And after that victory, it would be the pride of another man that would kill you. Now that is something. The Greek historian Plutarch would write about this Parthian king that... What goes around comes around. You will reap what you sow. And he would meet his end by being murdered by his brother, brother for the throne. The pride of men destroys lives. And this can be seen over and over again through history. There are plenty of stories that are given in the Bible that demonstrate this. But you can just look through general history and see that pride destroys people. Now, when you hear about that story, you can think, wow, 30,000 men, 40,000 men all suffered because of a man's pride. And you can think that's very sad. But I'll say that it's not that much different than our modern society and government. The U.S. government is filled with arrogant men and women who have no care for the people that they're supposed to serve. We have CEOs of corporations and criminal masterminds behind the banking systems that manipulate the market in order to squeeze money out of the poor and the middle class. The inflation of the U.S. currency deserves a podcast on its own, but it is horrendous what is happening right now. Prices are through the roof. That's because there is more money in circulation in our national debt that you know, there's more than ever has been printed in U.S. history. Now, that's astounding. $30 trillion to the debt alone. The circulation of U.S. dollars is more than any other time in history, and it's only within the last, I think, 15 years was the last scale I saw. The COVID restrictions that have recently been withdrawn, for the most part anyways, have limited people's freedoms and attacked the very core of what we believe about the Constitution. The social issues with abortion have driven the left absolutely mad. These disgusting freaks would rather openly mock and laugh at slaughtering babies than consider decency. This is also on top of a ruling elite in this nation that are smashing their thumbs upon the working class. And, well... With God being kicked out of a society a long time ago, that means that America's destruction is nigh. It really tells you what the elite in power think about you when they pull their shenanigans. I mean, it was just in the last few days that the Senate and the House ruled that they're going to send $40 billion over to Ukraine. Yes, Ukraine, that mafia-ran state... Meanwhile, there's inflation and our infrastructure is falling apart and our borders and drugs and human trafficking and all sorts of stuff that's taking place here. But no, wait, let's send $40 billion to Ukraine. Oh, yes, in the midst of $30 trillion in debt. 
This is absolutely insane. You know, these elite really don't care about our so-called freedoms. And that was demonstrated with the COVID pandemic. They'll say, well, if you just give up your freedoms, we will keep you safe. Well, they failed at keeping us safe, for one, with all the social and political chaos. And it sure didn't keep us safe from any Chinese cyber attacks or manipulation in the markets by bankers or the masses of people who just truly acted like sheep, which the elite thought they were. Even many Christians were deceived and danced to the tune of the government. They did that for over a year, even. It was the pride and arrogance of the American people that first allowed such men and women to take and remain in office. The votes had to come from somewhere, and that somewhere is from the populace that wanted to feed their own lusts. How do we fill the government with such a large group of psychopaths? Literally, psychopaths. How long is it going to take for people to realize that both the left and the right in government are playing ball with each other, and they have been for a very long time? It was pretty hidden before, but now it's out in the open. I would say that me, being a conservative, being a Christian conservative, would look at the so-called conservative right and only find a few individuals, maybe I can even count on one hand, out of all the politicians, maybe on one hand, that I could even identify with. That is sad. The American people have lost their ability to know how to pick moral leaders. Rather, they pick those who would benefit themselves somehow. How did offering so-called free money, free college, free health care, free rent, free, 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 ever be acceptable? Because it's not free. <laughs> That's the ironic part about it. Our pride has made us lazy and complacent, which makes us fat, dumb, and happy, right? Happy just is very relative, obviously. But meanwhile, these criminal masterminds are working to try to overthrow America and bring in a global system. Now, of course, the Bible gives a hint to this with the Antichrist emerging and that type of thing. But for heaven's sakes, did you have to just hand the Antichrist the keys? No, you didn't. But that's exactly what we did. These politicians will get what's coming to them one day. God says in the book of Psalms, chapter 12 and verse 3, quote, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things who have said with our tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy? Now I will rise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth out of him. End quote. What that's basically saying is that God will cut off these evil men one day and he will raise up his own found in Christ. One thing is for sure, and that is God's promise in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, quote, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heed from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. End quote. Now, that would be the start of fixing what we see in government now and in the culture and society. Of course, there are many Christians that unfortunately do not believe that that verse is applicable to America. But I believe it is applicable to any nation who chooses to do so. They'll say, oh, well, it was just meant to be you know, for Israel. Well, no, hold on. It wasn't just Israel that was told to do so and that were blessed when they did it. It was also Nineveh in the book of Jonah. The whole world is called to repentance, obviously. And if they did those types of things and they sought the Lord, God would bless them. I have shown that a person's proud choices can affect those around them. We can think of talents of man that can lift them up in pride. It could be sports, it could be somebody's intelligence, 
But there is more to it than just talent or holding a certain position. Pride is not only an action, but it starts with an attitude. We can carry that attitude with us into our workplace and be miserable to the people we deal with. Pride in the workplace, pride in the home can be more subtle, but it'll come out when somebody else gets a raise in pay and you don't, or when something goes wrong in your home that doesn't go according to what you hoped and tension arises and our mouth tends to run. Maybe someone will get a promotion and you know, you'll feel, Hey, that should have been me. Well, that might or may not be true, may or may not be true, but it's our own pride that wells up inside us that causes us to be bitter and discontent. Pride can well up when we're told to do something by someone and we don't feel well, they have the authority to tell us to do that. <laughs> Interactions between employees can get to a place that they shouldn't as well. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 10 says, quote, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. End quote. It may be that you were legitimately wronged by someone, but how you respond can change everything about how that plays out and how long it lasts. We can all think of illustrations of this where we may have been legitimately wrong at some point, but we didn't respond the correct way. And there were probably things that happened that probably didn't have to happen how we responded correctly. The Lord blesses those who respond appropriately. When our expectations are not met somehow, it's the pride that wells up and causes contention. Choose humility. It's not easy, especially in the moment, but it sure is worth it in the end. Maybe you're a leader in an organization or company and you're in charge of a group of people. Do your people respect your position but not respect you? Are they afraid to get fired and thus they obey rather than following you out of respect? Well, do they talk behind your back because of that? That's what tends to happen. There's always outliers of people who are going to be rebellious. We'll call it the 10%. But how is the general attitude of the workplace? One famous author, C.S. Lewis, once said, quote, A proud man is always looking down on things and people. And, of course, as long as you are looking down, you cannot see something that is above you. End quote. What is he talking about? <laughs> the proud man will oppress those who serve them and they're going to miss that they're subject to God. A humble man will treat his employees with respect and lead by example. Pride is not always exercised, but those who are just outgoing alpha males and they're just loud and obnoxious. There are plenty of passive aggressive people or even passive in altogether who are very proud and their attitude shows it. Sometimes it almost seems as though they're humble until you cross them the wrong way or you don't meet their expectations. I recently observed a man who was the example of this very thing. These kinds of people can be easily intimidated by stronger personalities and if they're in leadership, they can oppress them. Remember the earlier story about the Parthian king and him executing his general for success. This actually happens more often than we like to admit. Now, I'm not saying that people will kill another out of pride, even though that does happen, but they're not just literally executing their rivals, but they're making sure the person quits or they terminate them at their job or, or try to shame them in some fashion to diminish them. It's just the same. The right kind of leaders will cultivate those who work for them and strive to see them excel. If they excel, then you excel. Of all the sins in the Bible, pride is number one on the list. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 17 gives us a list of sins that God hates. It tells us that pride is first on a list of seven things that God calls an abomination. Why not murder, adultery, child molestation, rape? 
it's because pride is the very root of all sin that takes place in the world. Pride is what wells up in a man when he thinks he knows better than God and he goes his own way. It is pride that leads us to believe that we are our own gods and we choose something for our own reasons outside of God's path. That pride leads us to idolatry in many forms, but the first is the love of self. You know, we hear many today who say that, well, people just lack self-esteem, but I beg to differ. Mankind demonstrates every day that he loves himself way too much. People rob, cheat, and steal because they love themselves too much. I mean, my goodness, America is probably the only nation in history that has a day of Thanksgiving, and that following morning you have something called Black Friday. (laughs) Yeah, definitely we love ourselves too much. It's not a popular message, but anybody with their mind intact can see that. We sin because we want to indulge in what we're not supposed to, and that can take many forms with various men and women. But let me strike a nerve even further when I say that even suicide itself is the epitome or the highest example of self-love. That is a very different way to look at it. But the basis for taking one's life is that it's based upon what they do not have, which is focused on self. Imagine how much of our world, our country, our cities, our communities, and even our relationships would change if we just humble ourselves. Even our own personal lives, it is the pride that causes social and marriage problems. Sometimes wisdom is exercised by not responding to a person when they're wronged. Sometimes it's just keeping our mouths shut. The Holy Spirit does give guidance in this. Our pride tends to help us be quick with the mouth, but it's not of God. Self-control is truly exercised when you properly manage your responses to people, of course, being filled with the Spirit and not after the flesh, as Galatians says, especially when there's a confrontation. As for our nation, things might be bad right now with the intense pride and arrogance all over on the mainstream media, but one day... All will be made right. Until then, let us think about how we can manage our own lives and interactions in a way that's pleasing to an almighty God. It really will change your life if you do it His way. Give it a try. I want to thank you for listening. And be for, be sure to follow us on the podcast media. Please take a look at our website, OurMightyFortress.com, and subscribe for more updates. Stay tuned next time for more great content and remember to find your refuge and strength in our mighty fortress.